Raha Muharraq was introduced to the world after becoming the first Saudi woman to climb Mount Everest and the Seven Summits. She is an advocate for women, individuality, and travel. You can see her new adventures on her social media. عرف العالم رها محرق كأول امرأة سعودية تتسلق قمة أفرست وباقي القمم السبعة إيمان رها بقضايا المرأة وقدرتها على تجاوز أي تحد ساعدها في تسلق الجبال واستكشاف بقية العالم تعرفي على رها في سالفة معدانة وتابعي أخبارها ومغامراتها على حساباتها في مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي My pleasure We're so excited You are the Pleasure is mine the, يعني, the absolute perfect candidate for this. We want to inspire, genuinely, we want to inspire, and mashallah, يعني, the things you have done. And the bigger picture is that you've done it for yourself. My pleasure, yes. A lot of people don't realize that, but it was it was such a personal journey. It was, it was never, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, did you know about the, you know, the profile and you know the, the being known and fame and I'm like I had no idea I was doing something that I've always wanted to do and anyone that knew me as a child and as a teen knows that I'm the same person so it's very I'm very grateful that I could do something that was mine but in the same time paved the way you know what I mean I'm so lucky to be able to say that well for those people who don't know you were basically the first to go on Mount Everest and to finish all the summits, which is ridiculously <laughs> impressive, <laughs> ridiculously. Um, I would you. like to know how this all started when you were a kid. When you were a kid, I love this question. No one has ever asked it in this way. Um, I was never told or made to feel that my boldness, my creativity, my uniqueness was a problem. It was never perceived as that, yeah, my, you know, my siblings, they picked on me sometimes, you know, because they're just hilarious. I got picked on uh, because it's normal sibling behavior to be picked on. But core, 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 I was never made to feel that there's something wrong with it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Ahli never ever made me question, why do I want to be a warrior princess? Or Lesh Abba, why do I want to scuba dive? Or why do I want to do these things? I was never put in that category in the Ishbik. Never. You know, even, even when I did crazy things, my parents were like, Rale. the question is like, why? It was not, why are you doing this? Not, not why are you different? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That there's a big difference between questioning someone's motives and questioning someone's uh, intent. You know, and, and why are you doing this? As in, are you doing this because there's something wrong? Or why are you doing this? There's a c- critical tone that parents sometimes lose. They're like, iksuru, iksuru, ruh. they break the soul when they're like, but why are you being different? Mm-hmm. And that, I never felt that. I never felt that I was off or odd. It, it wasn't always easy. It wasn't always easy. It wasn't always smooth sailing. There were times when my parents were like, you're going to kill yourself, you know? But it, the, the core uh, belief in myself was never shaken. My core belief in who I was was never shaken. Like they accepted that I'm just an odd girl. Like they just accepted that I'm, that I'm different. And um, it's hard to even face that. It's hard for, for, for us women to even face your family and tell them I am different and I'm proud of it. It's even hard for many people to even, uh, let alone, you know, uh, even more bigger choices in life. I felt like at mine, it was my career, and my, my, which is one of the biggest choices. But there are even bigger choices, you know, who you end up marrying, what, what, how you end up living your life. I, they are even bigger from a his, you know, it's very important to to have that dialogue with your family and not just give your children these little tiki tiki boxes and shove them into it because it doesn't work like that. Sahih, 100%. Can you tell us when did that fire ignite when you decided <laughs> to climb the Everest? Ish, ish. Uh, if you ask my father, he'll tell you from the moment you opened your eyes. <laughs> He's like, 
I knew you were, he's like, I knew you were different. Um, I've always been like that. I've always been, I've always thought differently. I've always looked at the world differently. I've always experienced the world different. The world differently. Akhwani used to always make fun of me for like seeing beyond the thing and just being in La La Land. I've always been different. There was always this fire in my character that guided me. It, it, it never started. It was, always, it was always there. I always wanted to be different. I always wanted to be me. But that's really good. يعني, you need that as a girl. Not in our community. Genuinely in the world. We have a lot of superpowers. Exactly. We are born different. We are born unique and amazing. And we all have star qualities. صحيح? But along the way, we either get boxed in. Or we genuinely we lose them. We just lose them. We do. We are born superheroes. We are born incredible. We are born with an infinite amount of possibility and wonder. And 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 and, and. it is only those who hold on to their childish curiosities and those who hold on to those powers are the ones that write history and the ones that have. you know, names in history and are famous because everyone else gets lost in the shuffle of fitting in what it means to be a modern day adult. So, so yeah, I think holding on to your childishness and curiosity in, in a positive way and your, your belief in, in magic, your belief in like dreams, your belief in if you believe in it, it, it is possible. We lose it as adults. We lose that sense of bewilderment and that sense of um, wide eye, like positivity. We do, you, you can see it. There's, I've never seen so many smiling faces, but sad eyes in our generation. I've never seen so many as much as I see now, especially, especially after the pandemic. I've never seen so many people that are living, but are not alive or alive and not living. Like I've never seen uh, so many people that are walk, walking cardboard cutouts just because they lost that that spark that fire that sense of you know bewilderment and it's sad because it, you you don't realize as much as other people realize around you that you don't you're not shining anymore clear clear a lot of people don't have that what did you get out of it for yourself what did you prove to yourself the, i i I don't think anyone can tell me what I can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone can can take away my belief in myself anymore. Only I can do that. Mm-hmm. I am my worst enemy and I am my strongest critic. No one can take that away from me. Uh, we are we are powerful beyond belief. We just don't. We are programmed to be desensitized when it comes to believing in ourselves. It's sad, but it's true. Like what would advice, Methelen, would you, for example, give me and other people? I feel like I've had that belief since I was young. I, I felt very connected to you in the where I was born different. So I feel like I've had that growing up, but then I lost it along the way. And now I'm just trying to regain it. So what advice would you give me and other people? Well, the first thing is to be to be uh, forgiving to yourself and accept that sometimes you get lost in the shuffle and sometimes you you can't be 100%. Like you cannot live your life 100% diamond and we cannot live our lives individualistic completely. We are a herd. It's hard. So accept that sometimes that spark is gone. And also I accept and believe that it can come back. So I get sometimes in that phase, especially after 2020, I get in the phase of, oh my God, I have no passion anymore. But it's your responsibility to feed your soul. It's your responsibility to find something um, that reignites that passion. Look for it. Actually look for it. Actively look for it. Don't just be like, oh no, you don't like what's happening and just sit there and expect it to come up. Look for it. Look for something that can feed your soul and then try to make a living out of it. Oprah Winfrey said that find something that you're naturally adept at and try to find a way to make a living out of it 
uh, in my case, I, I'm a storyteller and I'm a passionate adventurer and traveler. And I made a career out of this, out of thin air. Like it doesn't exist. To be, to be completely honest, it's not the easiest career, especially my COVID. <laughs> so my advice is always to actually look for it. It doesn't, it doesn't come to you. You're not going to sit under a tree and meditate and it's not going to come to you. You have to actively read, ask, be, be curious, um, uh, ask other people what is the thing that you're passionate about. Try to take from other people's experiences because sometimes someone's going through the same thing you are and they might inspire you. Mia bil Mia, which is the whole point of this show. The whole point. Of- and I love it, by the way. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. It's just, I feel like I found my calling. And the thing that kept me from not doing anything was failing. Mm-hmm. Now, what? You failed. Mm-hmm. I would rather sleep at night knowing that I took that step forward rather than just, oh, I wish I did. Oh, but I couldn't. I say this all the time. My best advice is to, my best advice to anyone trying to do something different yeah. is to not fear failure. It's a rite of passage. It's a way of life. It's, it means that you've tried. I would rather fail a hundred times than not try once. And that, that's how I live my life. That's how I will always live my life. I'd rather try something new and fail than, than not try something at all. I have never been shy of falling down and getting hurt and learning. I've never been shy of, of, of these things. And I think that's one of the things that contributed to my, my life journey is that I was never afraid. I had no idea what mountaineering was. I had no idea what the sevens, I had no idea. I didn't give a damn how I looked like. I didn't, ca- I didn't care that I was bad at it. I didn't care that I was new. I didn't care that I was one of the oldest people, but so I didn't care. I just wanted to do something new. And I think there's, there's a beauty in not taking yourself too seriously and not being too afraid and failing. Failures is what makes people who they are. Pluck any name from history and, and try to see their, their, their successes. I guarantee you they've had a few failures before they reached to where they were. So when you decide to go training and you just said that you didn't mind that you were <laughs> the oldest or what like or anything, that Yani, I keep there was like physical training. Mm-hmm. So was there any mental training? Oh yeah. Look, climbing is I, I okay. I think what makes me different than other people is that I'm very disciplined. And I've always been athletic. So I've always been disciplined and athletic. So these are two very important characteristics for an athlete or a climber. So tick tick. But what makes you a great climber? is the ability to master mind over matter. Your body will always give up faster. Uh, your, sorry, your mind will always give up faster than your body. Mm. Your mind will always want comfort. Your body is built to survive. So your body can go further than what you think. So most people give up here before they actually give up here. That is very so the most, enlightening. It's absolutely true. I've seen triathletes. <gasps> <laughs> no, they couldn't continue because he got a blister or he wasn't sleeping well or he lost muscle mass. And I saw tiny people who, with one arm and one leg, climb that mountain like beasts. So it's, it, your mind is, is it's so cliche, but it's absolutely true. Your, your body is what gets you there. Your mind is what gets you back. 100%. What, what Yanni, if I, not that I want to climb or anything. You never know, though. Why not? You, know, you never know. This, how would I gain, methylen something as strong as that mental methylen power? Trial. You, you test yourself. You, you climb. You, you go through training. You go through... You know, you won't know what it feels like to be minus 40, wearing six layers, walking for 20 hours, unless you actually try half of that. You won't know what it feels like to be beating senseless with the wind in your face unless you actually experience that. And even me, after finishing the seven summits and looking back at what I did, sometimes I'm like, what was I thinking? Because I look back and I'm like, whoo, that's nuts. So for sure... Huh? Mm-hmm. Um, there's only one mountain I wouldn't go back to if they paid me. 
um, which is Dinali. I wouldn't go back there for, for anything in the world. Um, but I went back to, to Kilimanjaro to celebrate my 10 year anniversary for Kili. That I went back this year, well, this year, 2021, because yeah. I, I climbed it uh, 2011. So I went, I went back for 10 years and celebrated my 10 year because it was the only mountain I didn't have my dad's flag with me because oh. it was the first mountain because it was the first mountain I didn't have the flag because I had no idea that the people do that. So I went back and took the flag for him. And I took it up there. Um, so there are some of them that are beautiful and I would love to go back one day. But Denali, no. How were you feeling about yourself since the since number one climb and the last climb? It's so much, you grow so much. You, you, you reprogram yourself so much. You're the same person, but upgraded in a way. Like I'm the same person, but I'm upgraded. Uh, there are things that used to really bother me before that don't bother me anymore. And there are things that are vice versa that I never cared about and I care about now. So it depends, but definitely an evolution has happened. Some kind of evolution has happened. When you had that Lipton commercial, يعني the, the commercial that's, that's what I was thinking. That's one of my favorites. The commercial was like, oh, well, and wow, صراحة. it was really well. I loved it. Yeah. Beautiful. صراحة. So uh, tell well us. Well done. Very, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest, the, my first big brand mm -hmm. collaboration was with Lipton. And Lipton is in every single house of Saudi So when they approached me and I'm like, you guys want me. And they're like, yeah, I really want you. And I loved it. And they're like, what do you want? I just said, I want a simple story, storytelling uh, portrait, mm. a beautiful, simple, real portrait of, you know, I didn't want too much, too many bells and whistles. <laughs> and it was very simple, very nice, nicely shot. And it was in everything. I, I knew I made it in life. There's, there's a few moments in my life where I knew I made it. Mm. One of them was when my ad comes up before the Premiership League or the Championship League and right. that <laughs> then it would come and you'd see my face. Sometimes you inspire people in a, in a, yeah, and you inspire me a lot, even though we, yeah, mm -hmm. we're very different. Than <laughs> but, still, but it still like, means a lot to me. Feeling different and knowing that you want to try something new. That's the biggest gift I think I've ever gotten. I've, I am so grateful. I'm so blessed. I have so, so many things to be grateful for. But one of the things that I'm most grateful, and I get goosebumps every time I, I talk about it, is being able to do what I love and being recognized for it and helping others achieve their dreams. What a gift to be able to do this, to be able to live my passion, but in the same time, ignite other people's passions. That's such a gift. Not many people get to experience that in life. So after climbing all these things, can you tell me what are you doing now with like the adventures and that? So now I've become more like a spokesperson and a presenter super serious but a present so i i do i go to different locations and i i i bring it to people so i talk about it on my social media about you you, you see my account i go to different places i talk about how you get there the culture the food you know the hotels the activities so that's one big big chunk of my career which is a presenter because that takes a lot of my time other parts of course is motivational speaking uh, so being able to go to events and covering them that also falls between influencing and being a presenter basically I'm a storyteller <laughs> for other people to see you don't have to go in a in a specific way you thought you were no. going and it's okay if mid-career you decide that this is not what I want and I want to try something new. Go for it. Yeah, for this it. is exactly what happened to me. I've always wanted to be an adventurer. I just never knew it was a career. I never knew it was a job. I never knew it was something a Saudi girl could do. Because I would watch TV and see these National Geographic and Discovery Channel and I would be like, wow, you know, this is not you. Wow. And then I'd be like, oh, I, I can never do this. And then I grew up and I became that person. <laughs> You manifested that into your future, and if you believed, and you you had that belief in yourself, the main main purpose of the show is authenticity. We we don't have that anymore. You want people who are proud of who they are. They're not yeah. apologetic. And no, this is who I am. And I hope you like it. But if you don't like it, then mm, play great. Traha, yani, I have ridiculously enjoyed our talk. Me too. I kind of said I went like, ooh, like that.
And thank you so much, Sarah. Okay. My pleasure. On our show. Relax. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye.